Hello you nice people, I am Boris and I'm really happy that you're here on my YouTube channel um, today. Maybe I look like Steve Jobs a little bit, but uh, I just wanted to see how those frames uh, look on my face. Uh, those are very nice, very thin, you can see uh, very thin frames uh, from Francois Pinton, France. Um, lately I had uh, the chance to shoot a bunch of very nice frames for a client of mine, for a friend of mine who is an optician and he imports only uh, frames from companies, actually by companies who create only frames, nothing else. So these, these are very nice uh, Bellingers. Right now I will be shooting those. Uh, this is uh, a frame by Lafon France. Actually I will clean up everything the best way I can. Uh, they have really nice details on the back, actually. They're very colorful from the front. They don't look that, uh, that nice, actually. But if you turn them around, they have really cool print. There are some cherries here, very nice reds and blues. And I like the shape, the overall shape of the glasses. Actually, they look amazing on a photo. Uh, so I will shoot those with my trusted EOS R. Um, this is the EOS R with a 50 millimeter compact macro lens. Um, this is an EF lens and it has the uh, converter for the EOS R. I have my uh, synchronizer for the light, which is right over here on top. You can see it. I will put my camera on the tripod and I will shoot, ev shoot everything here on the table on a white piece of paper, which is uh, uh, actually clipped to a piece of uh, cardboard. So the first thing that I will do is I will try to um, align my image. I just want to show you what the camera sees right now on the screen, there it is. Here are the glasses, the frames, and I will start shooting with this set up right now. I will take my first capture. I'm shooting at 1 one twenty fifth of a second uh, f8 because I want as uh, big of depth of field as possible, as, as deep depth of field and uh, I have my flash on the minimum right now and I'm shooting at ISO 100, 100 and at manual white balance. So I'm going to take my first, my first image and it should go straight Lightroom, perfect. There it is on my computer. Photoshop is pretty straightforward. Just right click on top of all your selected images, go to Edit In, Open as Layers in Photoshop, and uh, Lightroom is going to do everything from there. All your images are going to load uh, one on top of each other as layers in one Photoshop file. Uh, unfortunately, there will be some problems with that, but we will deal with that later on. So, right now, my Photoshop has turned on and it is waiting for Lightroom to start loading the images. You can see the first images, image has already loaded and from now on the images are going to stack up. Hopefully you can see now that I have all my images loaded in Photoshop and maybe it will not be apparent by the first two or three of them but if I start moving around, there it is. You can see the focus breathing here. I'm going to turn on and off this layer and you will see how the image moves around just a little bit, just slightly. So we will use uh, one of the more useful features of Photoshop, which is called Auto Align. So I will select all the layers and we go to Edit, Auto Align, 
and I will leave everything as is. I will not change anything, any of the settings, and I will go and say OK. And Photoshop will take some time, about two and a half years, maybe, to auto align all the images. It will just move them around, squeeze them a little bit, and uh, try to align them as best as possible. Um, of course, it will not do a perfect job, but it will be good enough for our purposes uh, of photo stacking because we're going to use just small, small parts of the different images and it will not be noticeable uh, that there are some, um, some issues with the alignment. After some considerable amount of time, uh, it still says generate output panorama. It will not be a panorama, but yep, there it is. Uh, it's on the screen and you can see how Photoshop has aligned all the layers. You can see the different layers moved around, stacked on top of each other. Now you can see clearly what is going on. And uh, from here on, I will start doing the photo stack that I want. So unfortunately, I have one problem. The images are stacked the wrong way. I have my first image on top and then I'm going down. I want everything to go the other way around. So um, as I'm going with the stacking, I will be moving every image from the bottom to the top. Um, and I will be choosing just the parts that I want to uh, reveal. I will use masking. It's pretty easy. It's pretty straightforward. Let's start doing it. So I'm here. Uh, on a computer in Photoshop, I will rename my first layer and call it main. Um, Photoshop is going to take some time, so I will rename this to I'll rename this to main, and then I will move uh, the first layer and rename it to zero one so I'll know which layer goes after which. Uh, I will put this in a group and I will rename this to frame. Frames, no, frame. Okay, so what I will do is try to figure out how much of a difference I have in the focus. Remember that I moved my focus point and I can see that I have my focus right down here. There it is. I will turn this layer off and turn it on. So I will create a mask and uh, invert it. And then with a white brush, I will just go around and reveal the parts of the image that I want. Right here, you can see the difference in, in the framing, but right here it disappears. Uh, remember, white reveals, black conceals, so I move, I'm moving from white to black so I can show the parts that I want and I can uh, hide the parts that I, I don't want from my image. Maybe, maybe something like this. As I started working um, through the left temple, right over here, you will start seeing much of a difference uh, I created another group, as you can see, um, and I'm putting the, the, the left temple in this group. You can see how much the image differs from, from one to the next. Uh, I keep working the same way, I'm creating a mask and I am painting over the mask, on top of the mask, with white. I invert the mask usually and I uh, paint on top and then I just move my layer. Yep, perfect. I, I move my, my top layer to the group 
So right now I'm at number six. Seven, you don't need to rename the layers. See, I will invert the mask and then I will go on top of the mask and I will paint right here with white. So here when the temples cross, when there are the two temples crossing, there will be some issues which I will address later on. Right now I'll just <laughs> paint on top like this. And I will move this to the group, put the next layer on top, rename eight, mask, invert, and do the same thing here. I will paint around the end of the temple because I want uh, I want the shadow to be somewhat in focus and I think that I'm done with the left temple almost and I will show you the difference right now uh, I will zoom in a little bit and you can see left temple and without the left temple there is quite uh, a difference there so I will keep working Maybe I have one more image. Yep, yeah, I have one more image for this uh, left temple. Yep, yeah, you can see how much in focus the end part is. And this marks the end of this this side of the glasses. So I will move my next layer on top. It goes pretty, pretty fast. Um, eight, nine. So this is number 10. Number 10. I will create a group pressing command or control G uh, and I'll name it right temple. Tem I'm not sure if temple is spelled like this. <laughs> um, please do excuse my spelling here. Okay, so uh, as you remember, I started from the right side. So I will start, I will zoom in pretty close and I will start. I'm, I'm using a soft brush, a very soft brush. I had some problems with the brush. Uh, I didn't notice that I'm using a pencil, not a brush. So this logo that we have here, I will address this later. Uh, I will fix this a little bit. Um, this is going to be the trickiest part, but this is not a part of our tutorial. So uh, I will not put that much uh, time to it. And I keep working my way moving on reviewing more of of the focus temples Okay, so I have my glasses right here. 
So what I'm going to do is I will put all the corrections in one group. Actually, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to lock click on the eyeball of the original frame of the main exposure that I have. And I'm going to show you the difference. So I think that there is quite Bit, a big of a difference so the next thing that I will do is clean up all the issues that I have like like this thing here I will use the uh, healing brush right here on on top of a new on a new layer so I can hide and like do anything I want uh, and by the end I will be uh, finishing with a very very nice and crisp image. I will boost the colors a little bit. I will do some some other magic, but what I wanted you to see is the difference. I'm sorry, is the difference between this initial image that we have. Uh, you can see right over here on the sides and on the bottom of the frame. We are not very, very much in focus right here. We're not very much in focus and the temples are completely out of focus. So I put on the frame and the frame starts looking a little bit better here on the bottom and right here and on the sides. And then I put the right temple and the left temple on. And there is quite some difference. You can see everything that you want to see in the picture. Um, and that's basically the main edit. You can do something like, let me show something like that. Uh, this is a pretty large image. I saved it as a PSB file. This is the biggest file that I can save. It's probably about five or four or five gigabytes. So I'm gonna hit uh, Command S. It's gonna take some time. It's gonna take about uh, like two, three minutes to save and then I can uh, fix the small issue of the not perfectly white background. You can see that my background goes from completely white on the bottom to a little bit grayish. If I have tilted my, uh, my flash, my softbox a little bit to the back, I would have um, solved for most of this issue, but I, I didn't do it. So I have to do it in post. You can see 33%. It's gonna take some time, so I'm gonna wait. Uh, but yeah, I will fix this vignetting right here that you can see darkening. And this is not white, this is a little bit bluish, so I'll fix this too. Uh, actually, while it is saving, I can do something like that. I can create a solid color layer, um, white. Yeah, of course, I'm right on top of my main layer, so I will move this. Um, one position down or actually I'm going to move my main layer on top. Uh, I'll call this background. I will put everything in a group and I will go to blending mode and I will use uh, this top slider. I will press alt and I will split and nothing happens course because I yeah yeah I need to go a little bit further so uh, I'm gonna wait for the save to finish it's still at 44% because the file again is very very big so we'll move up yeah you can see how how lighter the image went uh, I split my, my lights and I will go very easy on, on that slider right over here. I will not overdo anything. And since I'm cutting the whites, I don't have a problem here, that much of a problem. Yeah. The one problem that you may have is with the shadows mainly. So make sure to split 
this slider by pressing the Alt button. Uh, I will press OK. I will zoom out and I will create another mask on top of my group and I will use the black brush, really big brush and I will hide, oops, uh, I mean black and I will hide these parts of the image where we have darker colors I don't have any issues on the bottom of course you can check for different things you can check for uh, artifacts that we have left over um, some dust scratches and stuff like that you can see that I have some scratches right over some dust particles right over here I will not worry about that now um, it took me about 15 minutes to create uh, my my stacking and uh, Photoshop took about 10 so they are uh, quite comparable uh, in terms of time you can see here on the left side uh, on the right side sorry the layers the different parts of the layers that Photoshop took uh, it's trimming it's uh, cutting it's doing its magic let me be very clear Photoshop has become very smart uh, over the past couple of years I remember the first version, the version 5, Photoshop 5. Uh, when I started working with the software, uh, it couldn't do most of the things that it does now. Uh, so it's amazing how much technology is um, helping us right now and how much time it saves. But yeah, let's see. This is the Photoshop version of our image. It still thinks about something but I'll show you what I don't like about it you can see I think already there are a lot of artifacts that I don't like it worked pretty pretty well on the temples I have to be uh, totally honest I like the way the temples right here look right here here and here but there is definitely some weirdness with the frame I will zoom in just a smidge uh, I don't care about the fact that yeah okay so it auto filled the let me decide it auto filled the parts that uh, were missing but the, the things that I don't like are right over here you can see this weirdness that happened uh, this weirdness right over here right here it mangled the frame here and right over here uh, here there are some some there is some weird stuff going on if i have to go through all the layers and uh, try to figure out which one um, and where is the problem it will take pretty much all day long here i have some problems Right here, you can see the darkening. Mm, there is something going weird going on right here. The shadows are, uh, they look really strange. So let's compare the two images. This is my version <laughs> and this is Photoshop's version. My version, Photoshop's version. And again, I can take all of those layers, put them in a group. Uh, I can create a solid white layer on on the bottom and I can use the same blending let's let's do it and let's see if anything will uh, will look better hopefully it will so go to effects blending options and remember start by pressing the alt key and separating the two the, the two parts of the slider yep now we have the white background come on 
Now we have the white background, but... And the image doesn't look that bad. Don't get me wrong. Still, I, I don't like the weirdness that's going on right here, right here, and right here. The other parts, I don't, I don't notice that much, but I think that I have a rather uh, better result than Photoshop. Uh, except for, for this part, I didn't focus any, at, at all on, uh, on this text right here, which is uh, on, on the frame, on the, on the glass. But this is uh, something that is gonna take uh, a long, pretty long time. So I will do this in post. So you see, it's very easy to create a photo stack. Um, especially when you are using a macro lens which has a very shallow depth of field and you need the whole image to be in focus especially with smaller objects like frames like this it's pretty small it's pretty thin and with this uh, it's going to be even a bigger issue because this is golden and when I turn the flash on, um, there are going to be all kinds of different stuff going on and uh, all kinds of problems going on, but hopefully I will address this in a following video. So guys, thank you for watching. Uh, if you have time, just press the subscribe button. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up um, so I can feel a little bit more fulfilled and create more videos like this. That was it for today. Uh, hopefully I wasn't too boring and hopefully you learned something. Um, so I'm gonna see you on the next one. See you.